Okay, we're going to look at flash and movie clips today and um, experiment with how they work. Basically a movie clip is uh, a small timeline animation that is saved in the library here and can be reused in the main timeline over and over again. Um, just to give you an idea of how that works, we have this animation. And you'll notice as the character goes skywards, there's certain repeated actions which are looped. Um, that's done using movie clips, okay, so the leg kicking and the arm, etc. So if I just go to the flash document here, you'll notice that I have the character on the stage. But as I scrub it, nothing happens, it's static. Um, one of the things you'll find with movie clips is that when you scrub the playhead on the timeline, they don't play, they're just static. Um, however, if I go to the first frame and then click on that, character double click. I soon have the timeline for that character which behaves in a way that you'd expect. Okay so that's the movie clip timeline. So we have that character on the main timeline which has its own little set of frames which do things. So here we have 25 frames. Our main animation is over 100 frames long and what will happen is that little looped action will happen over and over again so if I've got a hundred frames it'll loop four times in the main timeline. Okay a couple of things to notice if you double click you can edit the timeline for the movie clip very important it'll tell you on the top left what it is you're editing so here we have scene one which is the main timeline frames and then we are in balloon boy movie clip so I'm now in this movie clip and editing it. Similarly if I have it stored in the library here I double click it from there I can get into the timeline for the movie clip and edit it but it will tell me what I'm editing up here so very often when you start out in flash it's a little bit confusing because you might accidentally double click something on the stage and before you know it the timelines change and it looks all looks a bit odd that's because you're now in the movie clip um, area and editing that so just be aware of that okay so we're just going to go into illustrator here you see I've got a drafted uh, character. I use Illustrator, it's just personal preference. It's, um, it's a vector tool just like Flash, so that means it draws um, using anchor points and paths and you can scale them, etc. It doesn't matter which you use, you can use Flash, just draw straight into onto the stage or you can import from Illustrator. What I did there was just selected all of those objects, Command C, now I'm in Flash, New File, click on the stage, Command V to paste, and I'll have these import preferences. Essentially what this is saying is do you want to import it as an Illustrator or Vector um, file and maintain layers um, and recommended settings. So this is saying do you want to maintain editability for that vector, which I do. If I wanted to, I could paste it as pixels or a bitmap, so that's the same thing. Um, but I'd lose lots of editing um, capacity if I did that. So here we have all the little objects from Illustrator posted. Okay, So we just want to go in and do a small arm animation. So I'm just going to take that arm, Command X, cut that out, make a new layer, put it underneath, so it's underneath his t-shirt, double click, call that arm, good habit to get into, just name the layers as you go. This is body. I may want to animate this body as a whole um, later on on this layer, so I need to group all of these objects together. You remember that Flash gets confused if you have two objects on a layer and try and animate, so Command G to group that, which is in the modify menu. Command G. And then I'm just going to go into the first frame of my arm layer. Command Shift and V to paste in place, so edit, shortcut, paste in place, command shift V for the arm. And you'll notice quite handy that goes into the exact same position as I, I cut it from. Okay, so I'm just going to make a 25 frame animation, insert frame for the body, and then insert a keyframe for the arm. And I want to maybe frame 10, pivot the arm upwards, and then frame 25 pivot it back to the beginning. So frame 10, I'm just going to add a keyframe. So right click, insert keyframe. 
and now I need a point from which to pivot for the arm. I can get that by going into the transform tool. So you'll notice there's the arrow with the dotted box. I can resize things if I wanted to by just dragging these. I don't want to do that. I want to keep the arm the same size, but I need to take this anchor point and put it on a corner there. So that little circle is where the object is anchored from. And now if I hover near the corner, you'll see that my cursor turns into a half circle arrow. I can just pivot upwards. Okay. So I'm not going to put any tweens because it's quite a kind of funny animation. So I'm just going to go up and down just the ones. Okay, so we've got a basic animation here, a few frames, and I need to turn that into a movie clip. So if I click select the top arrow, sorry, the top frame. Hold down shift and select the bottom right frame of the bottom layer so everything's highlighted in blue. Go edit timeline. In this case, I'm just going to go cut frames. So I'm going to cut them out. And then we want to insert new symbol. So movie clip is a symbol. Anything that's stored in the library that can be reused is called a symbol in Flash. I'm going to call that balloon boy. Crucial thing as well, don't leave any spaces when you name things. And you'll see I have three types of symbols I can choose from. A graphic, which might be static um, stuff. Buttons, which have interactivity and hit states and overstates. And a movie clip, which is a little timeline based thing. Click OK. And now I'm in the editing mode for that. So I'm not in the main timeline, I'm in that movie clip timeline. You see I just have one layer now. Click on the first frame, edit, back to timeline, paste frames, and I've just ported that little animation over. Okay. So now I have Balloon Boy in the library, and if I double click that I have this little timeline. So I'm going back to the main scene, here I have nothing. Okay. So if I want to, let's just, for argument's sake, make things a little bit easier. So this is going to be called BG. Let's click on the first frame. I can click Balloon Boy and drag him out to the stage. There you go. Let's make the background of the stage blue. So just click on the stage and then go to Properties. Down here you'll see you can make it blue. And now I want to just have my Balloon Boy start from this point, go to the end, insert a keyframe, and drag him across there. I'm just going to do a classic tween. And then maybe at 60 frames, insert another keyframe, and have him come back the way. So classic tween. So we're happy with that. Just save, edit. Bit quick, but you can see there's a loop. Okay. Now, just to demonstrate, if I put in a new layer and go back to my library, drag out another balloon boy, and just have him on the middle. That's the beauty of it. We can reuse things and they always loop and we can use many, many. Um, an important thing to note, just while we're on this subject, um, once I put a new symbol in, uh, a new movie clip in the Properties Inspector, you'll see here you have what we call an instance name. For every new one you make, just give it a new name so that Flash knows that they're all different versions of that one symbol. So I'm going to call this one boy2. Again, you'll notice there aren't any spaces there. And then with the other character, back to properties, boy1. This is just housekeeping. Um, it saves a lot of problems later on if you've got lots of, lots of instances all based on the same movie clip flying around. It's good to tell Flash that they're all individuals 